Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Grace and peace, beloved of God. This is Pastor Aziza Morrison, and I want to say a good God bless you and a good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our and Zion Travail's prayer and impartation call. You can meet us here every Tuesday and every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, where brothers and sisters from around the country and abroad like to come together to lock arms to pray to seek the Lord while he may be found, and to call upon him while he is near. We are so very thankful for all of you, our faithful prayer partners who are with us this morning. Thank you so much for waking up to pray with us and to pray uh, for us, to pray for your nation, to pray for your community, to pray for your family. Uh, We are just so very grateful every time uh, we come together and lock arms and uh, we see our prayer family with us. Uh, It just blesses my heart so much. Uh, So thank you all so much uh, for being here today. Give me one, give me one second. I have just done something, and I don't know how to undo what I just did. Give me one. That's what I get from messing around with stuff. There we go. All right. So I want to say good morning. Good morning, Sister Lisa. God bless you. Sister Shirley, good morning. Good morning, Denise. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Deborah. Good morning, Nikki. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Dr. Butts. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Tasha. Good morning, Sister Antonetta. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Williams. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. John Mean is here on the prayer line. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Teresa is here. Good morning. Good morning. Denise is here. Good morning. Good morning. Mother Nickerson is here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. And to everybody else, good morning. Just wanted to give a couple of good morning shout outs and for everybody else that will wake up uh, in about five minutes. <laughs> Jenny about. So, so uh, we got, I told you all, we have two crews. We got the on time crew and then we got the I'm going to wake up at six crew. So they wake up at six and then they kind of start coming on 605, 608. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll be on in a minute. Um, I want to share with you what I believe God is doing for us and what has shifted for us. Um, I heard someone say prophetically, and it bore witness with my spirit, and I I believe that word to be true, and so I have a lesson that I want to use to support that prophetic word. The prophetic word was that for many of us, and these are kind of my words, but this is essentially what the prophecy was, that for many of us, June is the beginning of a new year for us. And, and when I heard that, it bore witness with my spirit. And I just feel very strongly, and although we have been in prayer and consecration all year, and it's something that we have been doing for years, I do believe that for us, this consecration has reset the clock for us. And the scripture that I'm going to read to you to, to back this up is found in Lamentations. I'm going to do two passages of scripture. I'm going to read this scripture very quickly for our context, and then I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 35 to support uh, this word of the Lord for you. Um, What I'm going to talk about for the next uh, 10 minutes or so is instructions for a fresh start. For those of you that like to take notes, you can write that down. Instructions for a fresh start. And I believe that many of us, all of us, God is giving us a fresh start. Isn't that a good place to give him a praise right there? Hallelujah. If you need a fresh start, you just say hallelujah. Come on. If you need a fresh start, just say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I could use a fresh start. (laughs) Jesus, we love you. We bless thy name for blessing us. Thank you so much for all the things that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you are yet going to do. Speak to our hearts. Open up our spirits, our ears, that we may hear and receive you. Allow us to be sensitive to your voice in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Lamentations chapter 5 and in verse 21, 
In the CEV version, it says, in verse 21, it says, bring us back to you. Give us a fresh start. (laughs) Bring us back to you. Give us a fresh start. In the book of Lamentations, chapter 5, Jeremiah is, Um, lamenting his soul before God because so much trouble and desolation had come upon God's people. Um, He he talks about in um, verse number five, which really uh, stood out to me, says, we are terribly mistreated. We are worn out and can find no rest. And I feel like that is the reality of a lot of us, a lot of believers, and just a lot of people during this time of this this period, this season, this era of COVID. Many of us are just worn out. You know, when I talk to people, you know, and, and they're telling me the things that's happening to them um, and how they are feeling. Many of us don't recognize it, but we are going through right now and experiencing the mental, mental anguish of the weight of all that we have been uh, uh, undergoing, and, and caring and, and having to deal with and to manage over these last three years. Many of us are just worn out. Somebody say, Lord, I'm worn out. <laughs> now, don't say it if you're not, but if you are, just confess it. Lord, I'm, 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 I'm worn out. I, I've been stretched to the max. I've been stretched to the max in my marriage. I've been stretched to the max with my children. I've been stretched to the max on this job. God, I am worn out. And Jeremiah is crying out to God because it seems as if the wicked were prospering above the righteous. And you know how it is. You know how it is where, you know, you're living holy, you're living all that you know how to live, you're doing what God is telling you to do, you're, 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 tith- you're, 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 you're paying your tithes, you're sowing your offerings, uh, you're doing the things that you believe that you should be doing, and you can't find a break. And it seems as if those who won't even acknowledge God seem to always have more than you. And so Jeremiah is praying to God. He, he even, I love even in verse 12, and I really didn't even mean to point these scriptures out because I really want to go to um, uh, uh, Genesis. But in verse 12, he talks about those in government. Our rulers are strung up by their arms, and our nation's advisors are treated shamefully. Uh, young men are forced to do works of slaves. Boys must carry heavy loads of wood. He, he, he's talking about even the young men who uh, are, are being mistreated, the attack that is on the young men. Come on, I need you all to hear this prophetically. And, and so as he is crying out to God, he, he, he makes this declaration And the declaration is, I know that we have gotten away from you. I know that a lot of this is happening because we have gotten away from you. And many of us, brothers and sisters, although we are praying and we go to church, but many of us have gotten away from our first love. You, 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 you're really not in prayer. You're really not in the word like you used to be. You're too busy. Your alarm clock goes off, and as soon as it goes off, you grab your phone, and you want to see what the world is doing before you stop to hear what God has to say to you. 
And I believe, brothers and sisters, that in this season, God is bringing us back to him. If, if, if COVID hasn't taught us anything, it, has ta- it should have taught us that we've got to keep the main thing the main thing. And we've got to keep God at the head of our lives. We cannot make idols out of ourselves. We can't make idols out of ministries. We can't make idols out of ministers. No, we've got to put God where he belongs, and that's the head. And, and, and so Jeremiah says, bring us back to you. Come on, Zion. Come on. Somebody say, Lord, bring me back to you. Lord, bring me back to you. And he says, give us a fresh start. And so this is where I want to put a pin this morning, brothers and sisters, because I believe that this is your word. Somebody said, this is my word. God is giving me a fresh start. As you are turning your face back to God, as you are being intentional about spending your time with him, as you are being intentional about pleasing him in every decision that you make, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that God, hallelujah, he is going to concentrate the time. He's going to catch you up. He's going to put you where you need to be. God is resetting the clock for you. Oh, that's a good place to praise him. God is resetting the clock for you. And so I want to give you very quickly so we can pray some instructions for a new beginning in Genesis chapter 35. This is where I intended to go. I didn't intend to spend so much time in limitations. Genesis chapter number 35, verse 1. I'm going back to my, you hear my page is turning, so y'all know that means I'm, I'm, back, in my, I'm back in my King James. I'm not going to read all, uh, I'm glad I had time to read all this. Let me see. Let me see. Well, let's see. Verse 1, and God said unto Jacob, arise. Arise. Somebody let me know if you can still hear me. I'm, I'm receiving error messages on my end uh, from the software. Arise. Go up to Bethel and dwell there and make there an altar. Thank you. And make there an altar unto God that appeared up unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. I'm not going to read all of this. It's too much. It's too much to read. I'll just, I'll just tell you about it. The, 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 what's happening in Genesis 35 is that Jacob is in a great place of fear. He's in a great place of fear and uncertainty about his future. And he had been struggling with uh, great grief and, and shame because of his family. And because of uh, their situation, what had happened was his daughter Dinah had been raped by Shechem, and um, he was a prince in the land, and Jacob's daughter had been raped, and his sons um, actually went and slaughtered um, the sons of Shechem. And so he, they're, they're, his family is on the run right now. And so um, they're on the run, and they are experiencing a a lot. They're experiencing grief, grief from the rape, um, but then they're also experiencing shame. He's ashamed because he made a covenant um, with uh, Hamor, which was Shechem's father, um, but his sons went behind what he said, and they still slaughtered the sons of Hamor. And so now Jacob is dealing with shame. He's also dealing with shame because they, his family is now on the run. And so um, uh, I was going to tell you the whole story, but that, 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 that's enough. What, what happened was that uh, his sons, uh, Simeon and Levi, they had tricked she- uh, Shechem um, and the men to, to getting circumcised. Um, and 
uh, they told them that if they would get circumcised, if they would become, they would unite with them. But instead of uh, uniting with them, when all of the men were circumcised, of course they were in pain. While they were in pain, they went in and they killed them. So, so, so that's what's happening. That's the background. That's where at. And so now Jacob is terrified. He's terrified about the possible future, and he's terrified about the attacks that's going to come from the Canaanites, all right? So this is where we come to Genesis 35 and 1. So when we get to Genesis 35 and 1, God gives him a word, and the word that God gives him is this. The word that God gives him is, then God said to Jacob, arise. Um, I'm trying to see here because some of you are telling me you can hear me now, which I don't know if that means you could not just hear me. Uh, I just gave a whole story. I hope you all heard the lesson. Um, I may have to repeat it. Um, If if you all did not hear the background, somebody let me know. Um, You're saying you can hear me, but it's – let me see here. Okay. All right. Let, let, me, let me keep going. Um, so God gives him a word in the midst of his fear, in the midst of his in, in, uncertainty, in, mis, in the midst of all of uh, this that is happening. God gives him a, 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 a word of new beginnings, and he tells him to arise and to go and to make an altar. And so Genesis 35 and 1 starts out, God said to Jacob, God said. And so Jacob needed a new word. He needed a new beginning. He needed a fresh start. Jacob needed a fresh encounter with God. And many of us, we need a fresh encounter. We have been going through so much and, and, and wrestling with so much and, and, and dealing with so much and facing so much. You need a fresh start. You need a new encounter. And I want to say to you this morning, beloved, that God desires to speak to us and to give us a new beginning God desires to give us a fresh start. He is the God of new beginnings. God is the God of new beginnings. And when God speaks a word to us, the word that God will speak to us will, watch this, it will personally bring new life to us. And you have to begin to take what God says to you. You've got to take it personally. And so there's no need of you waking up at 5.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.45 in the morning to, to come on here just to listen and not receive. And you've got to receive this word that God is giving you a fresh start. You know, when we have lost our way and when we are overwhelmed and when we are experiencing turmoil or, or when we are in the fear of our future, God wants to speak to us and he wants us to return to him. He wants us to return back to our first love. He wants us to return back to our passion for him. What, what, what did Jeremiah say? Bring us back to you. And so God's word, when God speaks to us, God's word will bring us, watch this, two things. And I pray that this word, this morning, brothers and sisters, after we, as we are coming off of our three days of prayer and consecration, it is my prayer that this word will bring for you direction and that it will give you hope for your future. People who commit suicide, they commit suicide. One of the reasons is because they have lost hope. The only reason you, you, whatever your name is, all of you that are on this, the reason why you keep going when things are hard for you is because you have a hope that things will get better. You, you hope that things are going to change. You hope that, that your situation is going to turn around. 
But when you no longer have hope, when you can no longer see things getting better for you, when you believe that this situation that I am in right now is the best it's ever going to be and I no longer want to experience this, when you have lost hope, this is when someone will say, I'm done, I'm taking my life, I'm out of here, and they will go through with it. And so what God's word does for us, God's word will bring us direction and hope. And so whatever has been going on with you, maybe you are worn out. Maybe you are tired. But God has given you a word today, and that word is he's given you a fresh start. And so I'm praying today that this word, watch this, don't laugh at what I'm about to say. I pray that this word will keep hope alive in you. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor Jackson. I pray that this word will keep hope alive in you, that it will cause you to keep on going, that it will cause you to keep moving forward. And so, and so these are the, 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 the directives, the instructions for a fresh start. The first one, and these are also prophetic directives. Number one, what was the instruction? To arise. That's what he said. God said to Jacob, arise. That's your first instruction. Your first instruction for your fresh start is to arise. What does arise mean? It means to stand up, to stir up, to raise up oneself, to become powerful. No one can make changes or achieve anything sitting down. you got to get up. Y'all got to, come on, somebody, tell yourself, get up. Come on, tell yourself, get up from here. Listen, some of us have been in la-la land. I had to catch myself the other day. I mean, come on, sis, now, what you doing? You over here in la-la land. You want to keep praying all day and meditating all day? Get up. Come on, you got to get up. And so sitting down, Sometimes, you know, prophetically can, 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 can mean being in a place of defeat. When you find yourself always sitting, when you find yourself always lying down, you know, you can't bring yourself up. You can't get up, you know, get up and clean up the kitchen. You sweep the floor. Do something. Get up. The first, your first instruction for a fresh start is to arrive. Because watch this, brothers and sisters, why does God tell us to arise? He's telling us to arise because he's not going to do it all. He requires that we stand up and participate. Come on, somebody say that with me. Stand up and participate. And so you've got to make a decision. Listen, God is giving us a fresh start. But we've got to make the decision to arise from our apathy, to arise from our lukewarmness, to arise from our fear, to arise from our shame, to arise from our hopelessness, hopelessness, and respond to God. Respond to what God is saying. What is God saying? He's saying, arise. This is our first instruction. And, and, and so what God is doing as we have come off of this three-day fast, he is challenging each of us to arise out of our current position. If you are not where you want to be in God, if you are not where you want to be in life, if you are not where you want to be in your financial situation, in your situation in your relationship, and you are in need of a fresh start, The word of the Lord for you this morning is to arise. And then what was the second instruction? He gave him another instruction for his fresh start. He said, go up to Bethel. Go up. So the first instruction is to arise. The second instruction is to go up to Bethel. Now, what is Bethel? Bethel represents the house of God. It's the place where Jacob first encountered God in a dream. You remember when he was running from his brother Esau. And, and uh, uh, his grandfather, Abraham, had built an altar in that same place, and Abraham had, had experienced God in that same place. And, and Abraham um, had, uh, he, 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 he had an open gate to the supernatural realm of God, and he had access to, to the blessing. And so our decision to arise 
and pursue God has has consequences for for generations that's coming behind us. There are things that that you are going to do or you're not going to do that is going to positively or negatively impact generations that's coming behind you. And so Jacob, too, was impacted at this altar. And what he did when he, he, had, he had made a promise to God that if you take care of me, if you, if, you, if, if you provide for me, I'll give you a tenth of all that I have, and I will come back to this place, and I will build an altar here. And so Bethel, watch this. God told Jacob to go back to Bethel, but what does Bethel represent? Bethel was a place of encountering God. It was a place of promise. It was a, a, a place of purpose and, and calling. It was a place of inheritance. And so, so God gives, I just need you to follow this text. God gives him an instruction, go up to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. Jacob also called get Bethel, remember, he also called it the gate of heaven. Why? Because that was the place that angels were ascending and descending. I, I, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that God is bringing us back to him. Jeremiah said, bring us back to yourself. Some of us need to go back to Bethel. Oh, come on, Zion. You need to go back to that place where you, where you will lay on your face in your home, on your carpet, on your hardwood floor. You will bring out your prayer shout, get out your sheet, wake up in the middle of the night and, and cry out to God. Come on, Zion. Somebody say, I'm going back to Bethel. I'm going back to the place where God would speak to me. I'm going back to the place where, where, where my praise was on fire for God. Many of us have has lost our praise. Come on, come on. Some of us, I couldn't, I couldn't, I could never outbeat you praising God. I could never outbeat you shouting and giving God the prayer. What happened to your prayer? God says, go back to Bethel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be- Bethel means, it, it, it means the presence of God in his house. It's, it's, it's where there's access to the realm of the supernatural life. Come on. Angels were ascending and descending. They were, they were. They were coming down from heaven and going back up to earth. It's, it's where you're able to access uh, both realms at the same time. And so in this new beginning, at this fresh start, many of us, I, I even prophesy, that many of you are going to begin operating in the realm of the supernatural. God is going to be dealing with you in dreams. You're going to begin seeing things that's happening in the realm of the spirit. But you got to get to Bethel. And Bethel, watch this, Bethel is not a physical place. Bethel is a place in your spirit. It is a posture that you must obtain before God. You, and you know this, that you are, a, you are a temple. What does the Bible tell us? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost with this on the inside of you, that you are not your own, but that you have been bought with the price? Therefore, you got to glorify God in both your body and in your spirit. Come on, Zion. But then there are times where God wants us to come corporately to the temple of God. You, you, you can never pay me a million dollars to make me think that you don't have to go to church. I don't care what you say. There is something about the gathering of the saints. There is something about the gathering of God's people coming together. You need the support of brethren. You need the support of your sisters. So don't, don't tell me that you're getting everything that you need at home because you are not. And so then he tells him, so he tells him to arise. That's your first instruction for your new beginning. Your next instruction is to go up to Bethel. And then he tells him, the third thing he tells him, he tells him to dwell there. He says to dwell there. What is to dwell? To dwell means to remain. It means to abide. It means to marry. And, and, and so that word, it gives the connotation of commitment, brothers and sisters, because here's the thing. Nothing can be built by a person who is casual or uncommitted to a thing. God says dwell there. I want you to remain. I want you to abide. And so we cannot have a casual relationship with God. 
No, no, we, we, we cannot have a casual relationship with him. We are called to be in a covenant with God. We are called to be in a committed, intimate relationship with him. And I know this for a fact, and you know this too, that none of us can walk in the blessing and the favor of God with, 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 with being casual with him. God wants us to dwell. What about Sanio? Come on here, Zion. He said, dwell there. Dwell at Bethel. Dwell in my presence. Dwell. God is telling us, Jesus, I got to pray. He's telling us to, to, to make us an altar there, to be committed with our relationship. This is how we're building a fresh start. And then, and then the last thing, and then I'm going to pray. Maybe we can pick this up uh, another time. The last, the last thing he tells him for making a fresh start is to make an altar. Make an altar. God has given us a fresh start. Our instructions for our fresh start is to arise, to go up to Bethel, to dwell, to abide, to remain, to be consistent, and then to make an altar. What is an altar? An altar, brothers and sisters, is a place or a platform that is dedicated for service or sacrifice to a supreme being. And so an altar can be made to God or to evil spirits. But, but, but God is telling Jacob, I'm giving you a fresh start, but I need you to build me an altar. He says, make him an altar. And, uh, 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 an altar, brothers and sisters, it's a meeting place between the physical and the spiritual realm. The, uh, when, you, when you build God an altar, an altar is a gateway into the invisible, invisible realm of the spirit, and it allows the blessings of God, the favor of God, the wisdom of God, the instructions of God to flow to us. And so, and so when we make an altar, hallelujah, an altar is a place of exchange. What do I mean when I say a place of exchange? An altar is it's where something is sacrificed. Something is given in exchange or received in exchange for another. The, an altar is an exchange. I give you this and you give, you give me that. Lord, I give you my life and you give me your life. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Come on. It's a, it's a sacrifice, a trade. It's, it's an agreement. And so all throughout the Bible, God is telling men, to build an altar, the altar of God. Elijah built God an altar, and that is where the fire, the fire fell. The fire fell on the altar. The altar of God is the cross. Jesus' cross gave his life for men, and in return, we received his life, and that more abundantly. The cross was an altar, and there was power that was released. On that cross, power was released on the, the altar of the cross. And so how do you build an altar? Today, brothers and sisters, yes, we have physical altars. Some of us have places in our homes that we have consecrated to God. This is your prayer room. This is, this is where you pray. This is your, where you, 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 you sup with God and he sups with you. Uh, and we want that, but I also want you to know that altars are also built in your heart. And so either uh, we, we have an altar where we are worshiping God or we have an altar where we are worshiping man or we're worshiping idol gods in our hearts. It's in our hearts that we choose who and what we come into agreement with. It is in our hearts that we choose who and what we obey. And so God says, build me an altar. Build an altar at the place that you will dwell for me. The, the, the altar, brothers and sisters, that God wants in our hearts, it's a place of commitment and surrender. And so as we have received this word of new beginning, we have received this word a fresh start. I, 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 I'm saying to you, uh, brothers and sisters, that on the altar of our hearts, God wants us, hallelujah, to keep the fire burning. 
as we have as we have uh, uh, committed ourselves to pursuing the things of God, His purpose, His plan, and His will for our lives. We got to keep our passion for Christ, our passion for Jesus. Keep our passion. We got to keep it alive on the altar of our hearts. And so, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, my prayer this morning is that you will respond to this word, that you would not just hear this word, but that you will become doers of this word. I know that we all would love a fresh start, but there's a part that we have to play. God has already done his part. It's time for us to do our part. We've got to get up. We've got to arise. We've got to go back to Bethel. We've got to be committed. We've got to dwell there. And then we've got to make him an altar. And I'm telling you, as you see these things, I'm telling you, I just prophesied to you, and I said this on Thursday, that many of you are going to see God do more in the next six months than you've experienced in the last six years because of your obedience and your commitment and your faithfulness. And I just decree and declare over you, I prophesy over your life this morning that you have entered into your season of new beginnings. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you immensely for this word. I thank you for sharing your heart and your mind concerning your people this morning. Father, many of your sons and your daughters, Father, we are worn out. Out. Many of us, Father, have become tired, tired, Father, of the rigor of war, tired, Father, of going back and forth. We're tired. We're tired of COVID. We're tired of death. We're, we're tired of the murdering. We're tired of the shooting. We're, we're tired of fear. We're tired of being afraid. We're tired of the senseless killing of our children. We're tired of the attacks against our children. We're tired of the attacks against our black and brown boys. We, we are tired, Father. We, we are tired. But, Father, I thank you that you are drawing us. Hallelujah. You're drawing us back to yourself. And so, Father, now, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, for divine sensitivity. Father, for every man and woman that is under the sound of my voice, I pray, God, that they would be sensitive to your voice, that they would be sensitive to your call. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would hear the, your clarion call, hallelujah, the call to prophetic intercession. Father, that they will begin to prophesy as they pray. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they will begin to stand guard in this last and evil day. And I pray. Thank you, Father, that you have released unto Allah. I thank you that you are giving us a clean slate. Hallelujah. I see in the realm of the spirit, I see a clean slate. It's like a big board, a big white board, and I see that it has been wiped clean. So, Father, hallelujah, I even hear the Lord say for some of you that you can begin again. It's not too late. It's not too late for you to marry again. It's not too late for marriage for the first time for you. It's not too late for you to do the things that you've always wanted to do. I hear the Lord say, tell them I have, I have hit the reset button. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for fresh, the fresh things that's coming to us. I thank you for a fresh anointing. I thank you for fresh oil. I thank you for fresh strength. I thank you for fresh wisdom. I thank you for fresh money. I thank you for fresh opportunities. I thank you for fresh doors. I thank you for fresh connections. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that old things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. And so, Father, I thank you for giving us the grace to build it again. I thank you, God. God, for the grace to do it again. I even hear it in my spirit. Some of you need to do it again. Some of you need to build it again. Father, I thank you that where it didn't happen before because we were out of time, we were out of your time, we were out of season. But Father, I thank you that as we have entered into this season of new beginnings, Father, I thank you that that which didn't work before will work now. And so I even prophesy to those of you that have done things in the past that did not work out. You've done things. You started to do things that God told you to do, and it seemed as if it fell. I even hear in the realm of the spirit to do it again. 
Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you for giving us the grace to start over. I thank you for giving us the grace to build it again. I thank you, Father, for what seemed as a failure was only a lesson. Father, I thank you. We know, God, that the enemy hates us and that he's raging against us. And so that which we commit ourselves to you, to, for you, there is always going to be warfare. But, Father, we decree and declare, God, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And so, Father, we pull on the, the, the weapons of our warfare this morning, and we war in the realm of the spirit against every satanic attack, against every enemy that will try to fight against us, to fight against our purpose, to fight against our assignment, to fight against our vision, to fight against our children, to fight against our marriage. Father, we take up the shield of faith. Hallelujah. We take up the sword of the spirit. We take Take up the breastplate of righteousness. Father, our feet are shared with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Father, we put on the helmet of salvation in the name of Jesus. We put on the breastplate of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Father, we stand on guard to war against the enemy this morning in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that that which you have declared for us and to us shall come to pass. We war for the receiving of our word this morning. Father, we know that when you send the word, that the enemy fights in the realm of the spirit for that word to be received to us. Even as you gave the word to Daniel, oh, come on, Zion, receive this. Even as Daniel was on a fast and he began to pray while he was on the fast, God, you released the answer while he was fasting. But Father, the word did not come until later because there was a war in the realm of the spirit over the word that you released over his life. And so, Father, now in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we will stand in faith until we receive that word. Father, we will stand in faith until that word becomes manifest in our lives. We will stand in faith until we see what you have said. We want you to know, Father, that we will not be moved and we will not be altered by what we are experiencing. But, Father, we are going to stand still until we see the salvation of you. And so gird us up, Lord. Gird us up, God, in our spirit. Gird us up in our mind. Father, prepare us for what is to come. Prepare us for this new beginning. Father, we are entering into new territory. We are entering into a place, into a dimension, into a realm. Father, even even into in the realm of in the physical into places that we've never gone before. But Father, I pray that you would qualify us. I pray. I pray that you would fortify us, fortify our hearts, fortify our minds. I bind, I break, I disannul, I loose the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that we will not walk in fear even as we are walking in uncharted territory. I decree and declare that we will not walk in fear even though we are walking in unknown and uncommon places. But I decree and declare that we will walk in faith. We will walk in confidence. We will walk in assurity in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would give us the anointing to build it again. I'm going back to that. I hear that in my spirit. Some of you, I don't care what your age is. There are some of you who need to build it again. There are some of you who need to try again. I don't care what it is. Maybe you need to try again on your weight loss. Maybe you need to try again for marriage. Maybe you need to try again with your business. Maybe you need to try again in your ministry. Maybe you need to try again with your consulting practice. Maybe you need to try again with whatever God told you. It did not work for but God told us that he is giving us a fresh start. And so that which didn't work before, it will work now. This is your season of new beginnings. The old things are passed away. Behold, behold means to stop, look, and see. All things have become new. And so we rejoice. We rejoice for the things that has been we rejoice for the things that are now, and we rejoice for the things that are to come. We bless you. You are a good God. 
Give us the strength and the capacity to walk this word out. Be with us as we go throughout this day. Let your spirit and your wisdom lead us and guide us. Allow us to be sensitive to you, to be sensitive to your voice. Allow us to love those that seem to be unlovable. Father, help us to stay on our post and not to give in to the devil, but to stand and to live righteous before you and to live righteous before this world in the name of Jesus. Be glorified in the heavens and be glorified in the earth. And we love you. We thank you. We thank you for our fresh start. We thank you for these instructions. This day we will arise. This will be the day that we arise. This will be the day that we go back to Bethel. This will be the day that we dwell and be committed. This will be the day that we make an altar. Thank you for doing your part. And we make a decision to do ours. And we pray today, Father, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts, we pray that they'll forever be acceptable in my sight, O oh Lord. You are our strength, and you are our redeemer. Let every heart that believes say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you all with the love of the Lord. We'll be back here on Thursday. You can go back and listen to the replay on the website, on your Spotify app, on your Apple podcast. Get this word in your spirit. Those of you who were late coming on, get this word. Go back and listen to this word and get this word in your spirit. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Remember that the Bible is right. When Zion travails, she shall bring forth. God bless you. Walk with Jesus today. Shalom. Bye-bye.